Someone shared me an article from the Greenville News. It was back in October 2nd, 1918 out of South Carolina. Now this particular story that we want to talk about is actually something that you should have learned in school. But of course, this particular country will refuse to teach American history, especially the American history that involves our oppression as black people. So let's put up the news article from that time period. Now, as you can see here, it says Negro women to be put to work. Now name me any other group of people who has been forced to work. Now this article was happened after slavery. Okay. Make sure you put that there. Now it says city ordinance soon to be passed, requiring them to be regularly employed. And it says many complaints. Now it says, regardless of whether they want to or have to able-bodied Negro women in Greenville who are not regularly employed are to be put to work, put in jail or fined heavily. At its uh, special meeting yesterday afternoon, city council discussed the situation with regard to this class of loafers at some length. And it seemed that all the members of the council were agreed that steps should be taken to compel them to engage in some useful occupation. So they were going to force black women to work. They wasn't asking them for no jobs. They are minding their business, but it gets even better. So it says it was decided that an ordinance similar to the one now in force requiring all able-bodied men to work at least five days per week should be passed with regard to these women. So they were forcing the black man to work. Okay. For five days, they didn't have no choice. Remember this is after slavery, forcing them to work. Such an ordinance will be prepared and voted on at the next regular meeting of council. A number of complaints have come to members of the council of Negro women who are not at work and who refuse employment when it is offered to them. The result being that it's exceedingly difficult for families who need cooks and laundresses to get them. Now, these black women don't work, didn't want to work for these white folks. These white folks want them to cook their food, wash their clothes, take care of their babies. That's what they wanted. And the black women say, nah, I'm good. I don't need any of that from you. I'm, I'm, I'm straight. We will we'll figure it out. So they go to the city council and complain that these black women refuse to work for me, refuse to cook my food, refuse to do. You see, you see how we had to take care of them even by force. This is American history folks. We ain't making no lies up about this. While, while they women could sit there and just cross their legs while a black woman is slaving all day in their houses. Okay. So it's a wives of colored soldiers getting a monthly allowance from the government have a number of them declined to work on the ground that they can get along without working according to reports. So the brothers was in the military, they getting their pay. They wives say, I ain't got to go work for these white folks. I'm good. I take care of my kids. I cook at my own house. Others have flatly refused jobs without giving any reason whatsoever. Like how dare these black women say they're not going to work for us. Why did, and, and they didn't give no reason you, you have to give us a reason. And they write in the paper. You didn't give us a reason. While well, I see others pretend that they are employed when as a matter of fact, they derived a living from illegitimate means. So they say, yeah, 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 yeah. I got a job, but then they hustling somewhere. They don't want to work for you. That's why they hustling. So they say the, the proposed ordinance will require them all to carry a labor identification card showing that they are regularly and usefully employed and the labor inspectors and police will be charged with the duty of rigidly enforcing the law. Ladies and gentlemen, that it happened in this country because they did not want to work in these white folks house. They was going to force them to give them a card and have labor inspectors and police to make sure they are working happened a little over a hundred years ago to black women. The black men was already forced to work. Now they're going to do it to the black woman. Even if she says she didn't need no job from y'all. 
the civil rights movement put it into that where well, black women was working in white folks house. And the moment black people start working in their house, I told you before, that's when feminism showed up because you have to understand historically the women in their household wasn't cooking and cleaning, wasn't taking care of their babies. Black women was doing that for them. So when black women got out of their house and the men in their community said, Hey, you gotta start cooking and cleaning like that black woman was doing. We need food. We need X, Y, Z. Oh no, no. Uh, feminism. They take them to the streets of feminism, but it's sad. It's very, very sad that how black people, our ancestors were forced to do things at the threat of jail or heavy fines. So when, when these people have ever told you, pull yourself up by your bootstraps, show me in history where they pull themselves up by their bootstraps. Show me in history where they worked hard for everything that they have. Show me. I mean, like I said, I, I have no problem being educated. If I'm wrong, I, I want to be corrected when it comes to history. When we read something like this and think about that, you being, think about it right now. Somebody forced you to go work in somebody's house, forced you to cook for them, forced you to clean their house, forced you to uh, take care of their children with the threat of you going to jail. I mean, that's sad. Our ancestors went through so much in this country, so much. They endured so much hurt, pain, torment, just to make another group of people happy and comfortable. But we don't supposed to have, you know, any kind of feelings about that. We don't supposed to talk about that. We should just, you know, let that go. You know, it's been so much long time ago, but really, is it really so much a long time ago? We still have forced labor in this country today. It's called the prison industrial complex. And the majority of the brothers is locked up and sisters is locked up off of nonviolent offenses. It's not for mass shootings. It's for nonviolent offenses. So you can continue to work and make other people good. There's no, this article and I read this It's just like, I, it just, go along to when I interviewed Melissa McKinnis, like the hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years of oppression, forced labor, all the things that's happened to us. And, and it just don't leave me with a good taste in my mouth at all. That's why I'm the last person want to hear any person tell me about the past and tell me how it was so much better. And oh, the fifties was a great time for who? Sure enough for black people. We haven't had a time yet. Well, I can say, man, yeah, this is some great years. We haven't had that yet, but you know, our ancestors and what they went through, you know, in Greenville, South Carolina and in many other cities, you know, they deserve to be reverenced. They deserve to be talked about. We have to make sure to keep their memories alive because we should have the same attitude as the Jewish people say never again. And I agree with that statement, never again. The route we going as a people, not knowing our history, not unifying, not realizing where we at, things will repeat themselves again. And it'd be our own fault. But leave me a comment, let me know what you think about this particular story. You know, the brothers and sisters that do live in Greenville, South Carolina. I mean, it's just, I know like a lot of people probably didn't even know about this article. Like I said, just as much as I find out about it, but it's just, you know, the history of what we went through is, is something and it's definitely, you know, something we should never forget and make sure we share these stories with our children.